Hey everyone, Zach Detmore here with another video about trucks versus vans. Now, a lot of general contractors whip around and pick up trucks, and that's great for them, but I'm gonna give you my rationale for why a van is a better choice. So here's why I think a van is a better choice than a truck. So the first thing people say to me is payload. I can't put as much in the back of a van as I can put in a truck. So my van can take 4,500 pounds roughly in the back of it without sweating. And if you're putting more than 4,500 pounds in the back of your van, maybe you should get that stuff delivered. If you're in the business of hauling heavy loads, then get a truck. Um, if I were you, I would get a truck like the Isuzu NPR or maybe a box truck with the cab of, say, a Ford E550, which is a van, really, isn't it? You want to get a truck, right? You're a general contractor, so what are you going to do? You're going to put some toolboxes on it. Can't leave the tools in the bed, but you could in a van. You get a truck. Uh, it's got a six and a half foot bed, so you get a bed extender because uh, you want to have more cargo pads. If you just bought a van, you wouldn't need that bed extender. You get a truck. You say, I'm going for a cap because I don't want my tools getting rained on and I want to keep everything protected. But if you had a van, you wouldn't have to pay the extra $2,000 for a cap. So you get a truck, you put the cap on it, but then it's so awkward to climb into it because the cap is so low. So then you buy a bed slide so you can slide all the tools out without getting inside. Problem solved. That's way better than a van, right? Well, except that the truck was more expensive than the van in the first place, and you've now you've dropped about $6,000 on accessories to make your truck more like a van. Every practical accessory you can buy for your pickup truck just makes it more like a van. Just get a van and stop pretending. Man, if you're still with me, it's a miracle. Yay! Let's talk about capacity and length. The longest bed you can get in a truck is eight feet long. Now let's compare that to a van. Just to be fair to you truck people, we'll compare it to the shortest van you could buy, which I think would be an Astro van, which they stopped making, but, or a Metris even. Um, that you can fit eight foot long things in. So uh, there we go, comparing apples to apples here. You see where I'm going with this? So the Astro van is 189 inches long. And the longest uh, F-350 is uh, 266 inches long. A whopping 77 inches longer than the Astro van that has the exact same cargo bed size. Oh, okay, okay, so we got longer vans, Zach. You're making a bad comparison there. Let's go for my Promaster. It is the longest possible Promaster you can get, and it has a whopping 13 feet of space behind the driver's seat, and it is 16 inches shorter than the longest F-350, which still only has eight feet. 13 feet, eight feet, 16 inches longer. You see where I'm going with this? Let's talk about kids. I've got kids. I need to pick them up after school. Can't do that in a van. All right, my ProMaster has three seats. So you got two kids, you can fit two kids inside that. But Zach, I don't want my kid to get decapitated in the front seat. All right, fair enough. Get the Sprinter crew. One kid in the front, four in the back. Now you got five kids. But Zach, I have 14 kids. No problem. Get yourself a 15 passenger Ford Econoline, Transit, Promaster, Nissan Envy, Chevy Express, I don't care. 14 kids, no problem. There's no truck on the road that will take 14 kids. So don't even make the passenger comparison. If you want to have eight foot of bed like your truck does, then you can put a lot of seats before you get to that eight foot marker. Next issue, Zach, I need four wheel drive. I live in a snowy climate. In New Jersey, it snows five days a year, so I need four wheel drive the other 360 just so I feel safe and sleep at night. What's wrong with a Sprinter 4x4? Or you can get a uh, GMC Express or, uh, why do I keep screwing those up? GMC Savannah, Chevy Express in all wheel drive. Or an Astro van, all wheel drive. That was way better than the Tundra I have that was four wheel drive. Safari van, Astro van would beat that thing up any day of the week. My ProMaster's front wheel drive, it is very good in the snow. I wouldn't say it's as good as a four wheel drive vehicle, but it'll get you to work. And you should probably just stay home if it's snowing. You're working way too much as is. Stay home on a snow day, your customers will understand. And if they don't, you shouldn't be working for them. Moving on. But Zach, I need to plow with my truck. I can't plow with a van. Fair enough. Um, you realize this is a channel for general contractors, right? This isn't landscaping. This isn't, I plow my own driveway. This is general contractors. So. What do you need to plow for exactly? 
I'm, I guess I'm missing something here. So you're going to compromise your whole business the rest of the year for the couple days because you're too cheap to pay someone to plow your driveway? What's that? A few hundred bucks a year? Forget about the plow. You still want to buy a truck. So just answer me this. Name a company that uses only four-wheel drive full-size trucks as their fleet vehicles. A successful company. Now, name a company that only uses vans as their fleet vehicles. Come up with as many as you can and see which list has more items. And I can guarantee the van one does. It's just good business. Trust me on this. You want to look good? You want to feel good? Drive a truck. You want to make money? Drive a van. That more 101? Signing out. Don't forget to leave a comment below how much you hate vans.